Hi, everyone. I'm Alex Nottingham, founder of All-Star Dental Academy. Thank you all for coming. So without further ado, we have Dr. Lauren Levine, also known as the Digital Dentist. Dr. Levine is the CEO and founder of the Digital Dentist, a company that focuses on the technology needs of dental practices. Dr. Levine writes for many dental pro publications, lectures internationally, and has worked with over 2,000 dental offices. He helps practices make informed decisions about hardware, software, data backup, disaster recovery, HIPAA compliance, and network monitoring. Dr. Levine joins us to talk about his six-step plan to a paperless practice. Dr. Levine will lay out a strategy to help you make the transition to dental office systems that leverage technology in a way that will streamline your systems and help create efficiencies to directly affect your bottom line. Welcome, Dr. Levine. Thanks, Alex. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, good evening, everyone. I'm looking at the list of people here. I see a lot of familiar names. Uh, most of you know that I do present and, and moderate webinars for other companies. And so it's a little bit of a role reversal for me to be the one speaking tonight, but I'm definitely glad to be here. The goal for tonight is to give you a brief overview of how to go chartless or paperless. You know, there's a lot of companies out there that offer services to dentists and unfortunately a lot of misinformation out there about the need to go paperless and when you need to do that. So what I want to do tonight is briefly discuss a, a process that I've developed, the six-step process that I've been advocating to our clients uh, for the past few years. But then we want to leave it open to as many questions as you have. Uh, I know that when it comes to technology, a lot of you have some very specific questions about your individual practices. So I want to make sure that we leave uh, plenty of time for, the, for those questions. Um, what I've tried to do over the last number of years, besides uh, what I do every day, which is working with practices, is to do webinars, present information that I think is of value to, to other dentists. Uh, many of you may know that I did practice as a periodontist for 10 years, uh, but it really was not, unfortunately not my cup of tea. I love technology. I grew up with this in my family. My, we own an electronics business in Canada, which is where I'm from. Uh, and of course, as all of you know, technology has really exploded in dentistry over the last 15, 20 years. The thing that I bring to the table is that I'm not married to any one company. Uh, we work with offices. Alex had mentioned I've had the pleasure of working with over 2,000 practices over the last few years, and we're able to approach things from a standpoint of let's figure out what's really best for this practice. If it happens to include things that I can get them at a discount, that's great. We're, we're more than happy to do that. But at the end of the day, we need to make sure that our clients are making intelligent decisions, make sure they know what's out there, uh, what's available, and, and that's really what my focus is for all the offices that we work with. Anytime I go to any type of continuing education, you know, my goal is to just get a few little nuggets or pearls of wisdom that I can use in my day-to-day -day business. I don't necessarily need to be entertained for hours nonstop. What are those pearls? Well, first off, and this is a common theme that you, you'll see throughout the short time I'm talking tonight, is that there really is no perfect system. Uh, there's no right or wrong way of doing things. Now, you can make some silly mistakes. You can go out and spend forty, fifty thousand dollars on a digital pan set that doesn't work with your existing software. We we try to avoid those types of things from happening. But you know, if you're looking at, for example, digital X rays, you know, what's the best system? Well, is it the one with the best image quality or is it the one that's the most comfortable, that works with your software, that has the best warranty, that's priced competitively? Really that's my function when I work with an office is you tell me what's important to you and I can help you to filter down the, the choices. Second point is really try not to put the cart before the horse. Um, what, one of the things you'll see as we start talking this evening is that dentists tend to focus on the things that we can touch and feel and that have some hard data with it. So if we're talking about digital x-rays, for example, it's line pairs per millimeter or resolution or all this, this hard numbers, a lot of times you get into trouble because you haven't forgotten about all, you've forgotten about all the other stuff that needs to be in place, such as the infrastructure, the computers, the monitors, the operatory design, the network. We're going to talk about that this evening. All that has to be in place. So you've got to have basically a, a treatment plan or a game plan of how you're going to do it. Now, in real estate, they always say 
the three most important things are location, location, location. For me, when it comes to going chartless, going paperless, it's planning, planning, planning. There's nothing wrong with doing things in stages. Uh, you know, because of the costs associated with this, most of the practices we work with do th things in stages. But as long as you've got a game plan or a treatment plan of how you're going to do it, you're not going to run into trouble. Well, what is that game plan? The first and most important step in my mind uh, is the practice management software. This is the glue that holds everything together. It is absolutely critical that we have a good practice management software in place. Now, as much as we would love our practice management software to get us completely chartless or paperless, the reality is it's not going to happen. You're going to probably need some type of third-party programs. Now, unfortunately, we don't have time tonight to get into all those programs, but I'll briefly mention a, a few of them as, as we're going through the presentation. Second most important thing, once you have the practice management software in place, is what about managing the images? And usually it boils down to one of two decisions. Are you going to get the image module that's sold by the practice management software? If you're a Dentrix user, are you going to get Dexis? If you're EagleSoft, you're going to get Chic. If you're Soft Enter Practice Works, do you get CareStream Kodak? Or do you look at some of the third-party programs, the XDRs and Aptrixes of the world? And why would you do something like that? Next part of the, the puzzle is operatory design. You need to have computers in place. You need to figure out, well, where are we going to put the monitors from an ergonomic standpoint? How many monitors are going to go in there? What about the keyboard and the mouse? Where are we going to put those so that we can reach those? Uh, what about hiding all the cables and cords that are, are throughout the operatory, which most of us don't want to see? That's a critical component of this as well. The fourth part of the, the six-part plan is your real infrastructure, the computers. Is there a difference between the computers that go up front versus the operatory versus the server? Absolutely. We'll touch on that briefly. Point five is where, as I said, a lot of dentists tend to really start with, which is where they run into trouble, is the digital stuff, the CAD cam and cone beams and sensors and cameras. And these are all the things that are fun and exciting and sexy and things that we really want to, to get into our practice. But as I said, you tend to run into trouble if you forget about all the other stuff that has to be in place first. The final piece of the puzzle, and I'll certainly spend some time at the end talking about this, is data backup and protection. And we don't even use data backup that much anymore when we're talking with our clients. We use the term disaster recovery. Having a backup of your data is a really good first step. But really what's more important for the average dental practice is that they just can't afford to be down for too long. And if it takes two, three, four days to get up, and we, you know, we've had offices that unfortunately took even longer than that, it doesn't make a difference what you spend on the backup or the IT issues, the downtime is what's going to kill you. And so we want to talk about a system that will allow you to get back up and running within minutes, not days or weeks or whatever the case may be. So let's jump right in and talk about practice management software. As I said, I think that is really the most critical things for a lot of practices. You know, back in 99, uh, Gordon Christensen, uh, they did a survey, CRA. They identified 208 different programs in place. That number has obviously shrunk quite a bit over the last few years. We can thank PracticeWorks and CareStream and Shine and all those larger companies for some of that consolidation. That's really not necessarily a bad thing. I happen to be uh, one of those people that doesn't necessarily think that you have to have a, a ton of choices out there. Um, the, the, the trick with all of this is just to make sure that, uh, you know, that you, you've got choices, but that they can work together. And that's really the, the challenge that we tend to face a lot in dentistry is that there really is no standardization. Dentrix can't talk to Open Dental, can't talk to EagleSoft, can't talk to SoftDent, and that's really a challenge for, for a lot of practices. Right now in this country, we really have three major players. We have Kodak, which is CareStream now, EagleSoft, and Dentrix, and that's about 70 to 75% of the market. doesn't mean that there are only ones out there. It just means that there's other options as well. I am not a fan of Macs in the dental practice yet. We will eventually get to a point where there's a bunch of good Mac options. Uh, there has been one out for a while, Mac Practice DDS. Uh, Shine has one that they've introduced called uh, Vive, I believe, that, that should be out uh, or is in beta right now. So there will be some options, but I, the, there's so many better options for the PC that I'm just not quite at the point uh, that we can recommend a, a Mac. 
The thing is, as you're going through this process, is you need to try to figure out, well, what are the most important things to you? Uh, all software programs have bells and whistles, but a lot of times they're not things that you necessarily need on a daily basis. The things that you are going to need would be things like scheduling and insurance, billing, uh, practice barometer reports, production collections, things like that. Uh, what we always recommend is walk an imaginary new patient through the practice and see how difficult is it to get them into the system, how, how difficult is it to chart them, to treatment plan them. As you go through that process, perhaps one program is going to look better to you than others. What are the ones that we're currently recommending? Uh, probably my favorite one right now is Open Dental. Maybe not as well known as some of the other programs that are out there. It's a great program, very price uh, effective uh, for most practices, easy to learn, easy to use. Uh, we are, are huge fans of Open Dental. I'm not going to spend too much time going through the individual slides, but it's a very functional program. For about 100 bucks a month, uh, you can have a full featured practice management software. It doesn't mean that there aren't other ones out there. It just means that there are um, a lot of good choices. We had talked about this. What about getting chartless or paperless? Can the practice management software do it all? As much as we would like it to be able to do that, we're not there yet. These programs are adding more features as time goes on, but you're going to need to look at some types of third-party programs. I've listed just a few of them here. It would be things like charting and patient education, confirmations and surveys, online collaboration, uh, probing systems, fee analysis, shade matching, in-office communication, uh, one program called Dent Forms that I'm a, a big fan of that allows patients to fill out their intake forms online. There is just a lot of good stuff out there. Uh, and what we typically recommend is ideally if the practice management software has that module built into their software, that's usually going to be the better choice. So go ahead and get a demo, talk with the, the company, see if it meets your needs. If it doesn't, look at some of these third-party programs and then make a decision. Which one's going to make more sense? Which one does what you want it to do? You're never completely locked into your practice management software. There's always third-party programs out there. Some of the ones that we've been recommending for years, there's ones like for patient education. This is one called Accept. It's written by a periodontist. It's more of a treatment planning software than it is uh, patient education software, uh, but these are just really good t uh, programs to, to have. There are all these programs that can do confirmations and surveys. I happen to be a huge fan of Demand Force. I've known them for years and very impressed with, with their system. But there's other ones. UPoint's no longer with us, but there's Patient Activator and Smile Reminder and a bunch of other ones that, that are out there as well. There's in-office communications, uh, programs like uh, Blue Note, and uh, uh, there's other ones out there like uh, Pink Notes Plus, and there's all kinds of different programs out there. Another thing that you would want to look at maybe something like remote access software. Many of you work from home or have multiple locations, take vacations, you want to be able to access your, your data. There's all kinds of remote access systems out there. Some of them can be very complicated. Some of them can be very easy. We happen to install one called LogMeIn for all of our clients that is free. Uh, and we, we charge to set it up and to monitor and maintain it, but uh, <clears throat> certainly you can get uh, remote access for a very inexpensive uh, amount of money. Let's shift gears now uh, and talk a little bit about image management and the practice management software. And the problem that we're seeing uh, with a lot of the sales reps out there, unfortunately, that a lot of them are telling them that you know you really want to stay with a large company, that it's really critical that you have the backing of a Shine or a Patterson or CareStream. And that's just really not been our experience. We have found that there's just a lot of programs out there that unfortunately don't make the cut. Uh, a lot of times people say, well, you know, this is such a safe investment. When you actually look at the history over the last five to seven years, the, the programs and the, the systems that have disappeared that have been consolidated have been the larger ones. The companies like Lightyear and Dentrix with their image modules, uh, their image management, and, and Kodak uh, with their image management, their whole health division basically went through a major upheaval. So 
it's not necessarily the best investment to, just because you're with a large company. There are some really small companies out there that have been around a long time that have been doing just one thing for 15, 20 years, and they do it very well. So I would not rule out companies like that. The thing that I think is really important uh, when you're making your decisions about <clears throat> what to do from an image management standpoint is you're really looking at integration versus interoperability. And what that means is do you want it tightly integrated that it's all within one family? Do you want everything from Shine or Patterson or CareStream? And that's, there's nothing wrong with that. It's a good approach to, to take, except that it limits your choices when it comes to adding other high-tech systems. That's what we call interoperability, the ability to mix and match systems from multiple companies, have them all working together. Some offices want that, some don't care. Again, that's really my function when I work with a practice is to say, you tell me what's important to you, I'll help steer you in the right direction. Uh, there's other things to worry about, such as proprietary image formats and about conversions and the cost, but at the end of the day, it really boils down to those two decisions that we talked about. What are the systems that are out there? Many of you who have seen me on the Dental Town forums know that I'm a fan of a system like XDR, a great system, easy to use, works with a bunch of different sensors. Uh, another program that we've been recommending for years is one called Aptrix, uh, X-Ray Vision 3. And what I've shown here is just a list, a short list of the actual sensors that they work with. The only reason I don't have more on there is that I ran out of space. So you know, it works with pretty much every system out there other than DEXs. So you do have a lot of uh, great options when it comes to image management. And, and again, it really just boils down to what you really want. A lot of practices have a good idea what they want initially, but they're not so sure they're going to want down the road. And that's the tough decision is kind of being able to look three, five years down the road and say, well, are you going to want to add additional sensors? Are you going to want to add cameras or CAD cam or cone beam? Because ideally you want them all working together. The next step in the process here is computers in the operatory, which I think is also, you know, it, it's something that's overlooked by a lot of offices, but it's still kind of critical. Uh, the problem for a lot of practices is that they just don't seem to have a lot of space. And of course, if you're talking about these large towers that are out there, yeah, that can obviously be a challenge. Uh, most of the computer manufacturers out there have created what we call small form factors computers that allow them to get into much tighter spaces as well. Uh, so that's really not a, a key issue. Uh, what about what, the placement of the computers? Ideally, it's going to go inside of a cabinet, but if you don't have a cabinet to place it, you're going to probably not want to put it on the floor. So there are mounts that you can use to put it under a, under a countertop or against the side of the wall. Uh, what, there's all these integrated systems that are now becoming more popular where you, know, you look at some of these pictures, whether it's laptops, which I'm not a huge fan of, or these all-in-ones where everything's integrated into the side of the monitor it really gives you just a, a lot of options uh, you know, in, you know, as far as how you want to design it in your particular practice. What are the ideal specs that we're looking for? Now, again, don't hold me to any of this. Computer technology changes very rapidly. Uh, I happen to be a fan of the Dell models. Uh, we're using the Optiplex line with about 4 gigs of RAM. It's kind of hard to find computers nowadays that have less than 250 gigabyte hard drives. Uh, we are still recommending Windows 7 32-bit. Uh, the problem with 64-bit is that there's no backward compatibility. If you have an older scanner or printer or credit card machine or something like that that doesn't work with 64-bit, it literally won't work. You won't be able to even install it. So we think 32-bit is still a safer way to go. That will probably change sometime in the next three to six months. We're finding less and less systems out there that are incompatible with 64-bit, and we'll eventually uh, change all of that. Servers, uh, you know, what are the things that make a server unique other than the fact that it's loud and noisy and you can't figure out where you're going to put it? Uh, there's a lot of things. It, it uses a special processor called a Xeon processor. We're using uh, at least 8 gigs of, of RAM in our servers, uh, 1 terabyte, that's a 1,000 gigabyte hard drive that are mirrored, it's called RAID. Uh, we still use server 2008, 2012 is out, but we uh, found that a lot of dental programs are not completely compatible with it yet. Uh, redundant power supply, uh, same day support is something that we also recommend for, for a lot of these systems. I'm not a huge fan of laptops, as I said. Uh, there's just a lot of disadvantages. They, they tend to be uh, more costly. They don't tend to have the same amount of power. 
screen resolution is not great, they're somewhat easy to knock over, and they're really not completely mobile. If you think about it, you've got to keep it plugged in for the power. You're probably going to have to keep it plugged in uh, to a network cable because wireless isn't fast when it comes to images. So you've got all these issues that you have to deal with that just make it more of a challenge. I want to make sure that we don't uh, run out of time here. I know there's a lot of questions coming in. So I'm going to skip ahead um, to the final piece of the puzzle, which as I said is uh, disaster recovery and data backup. And there's a lot of ways to do it. Uh, some people are still using rewritable CD-ROM drives and DVDs or tape, God forbid, and uh, I'm, I'm not a fan of either one of those systems. Uh, we do have a number of practices that are still using external portable hard drives. And they're okay. It's certainly from a cost standpoint, they are certainly the, the least costly option out there. The problem, of course, is that these drives are not indestructible. If you run over it with your car, if you leave it in the car when it's 115 degrees, if you drop it from 8 or 9 feet, it, it probably will get destroyed under any of those scenarios. So uh, we haven't found that to be the ideal solution. I happen to be a huge fan of online uh, storage. Uh, I th think the, the key criteria, if you're going to do that, is that you have to get it out of the office every single day. It has to be secure. It has to meet HIPAA and high-tech regulations. And the most important thing, and people ask me all the time, well, what's the best backup system? And my answer is usually the same. It's the one you're going to do every day. Well, what if you didn't have to do it every day? What if the process was automated, that you had a, a company or somebody else monitoring it for you, that it happened automatically, that at the end of the day you left, you're done? To me, that's the best system versus one that requires you or your staff to always be on top of the, uh, the situation at that particular moment. Things to look for when you're evaluating systems. It's got to be HIPAA compliant with encryption uh, in place. Ideally, the company is not going to just have one server. They're going to have backups of the backup all over the country, ideally not in places like California or Florida where there's a lot of natural disasters. Uh, there's a lot of programs out there that require you to stop the program from running before you can back it up, which is obviously a challenge for a lot of practices. So ideally, you want to find a system uh, for backing up that will uh, allow you to copy those open databases. You don't have to stop and start it each time. You want to have multiple versions of your data so you can go back a ways if you need to. Being able to do full restoration is important, but the more common scenario is that you just lost a single file and you want to have access to that as well. And as I said, it, it just has to be an automated process. Make sure you don't make the mistake of thinking that having mirrored hard drives in your server means that you've got a good backup in place. That's not going to help you if there's a flood or a fire or theft or anything like that. It's got to be off-site, whether you do it online or external hard drives. And in a perfect world, you're also going to have a local copy of the server, and that way that can function as an emergency server. You can get back up and running in an hour or two. The problem with online backup is, let's say you're a typical practice with 40, 50 gigabytes of data, it's going to take days to download that data. You will obviously cannot be down that long. So we want to get you back up and running quickly. Uh, if you're going to be online, you've got to have protection in place. You have to have a firewall, whether it's hardware-based, which is what we recommend. There are still companies out there that do software firewalls, but the stuff that's built into Windows is so good that we don't typically recommend that anymore. Uh, antivirus software is critical as well. There are some free programs that are okay. We usually recommend a paid antivirus software. It usually averages $30, $35 a computer a year to give you full protection. That's going to be a, a better long-term solution. So that's kind of where I wanted to end things. I, obviously, I, I would be happy to take as many questions as we have. Uh, the, the goal, as I said, was just to give you a brief overview of the thought process of what you need to be doing to go chartless or paperless. I know there's a, a bunch of questions coming in. I try to make myself available to anybody that wants to speak with me. You can email me at drlevine at thedigitaldentist.com. You can go to, to my, uh, uh, my blog at thedigitaldentist.blogspot.com, our website. We have a toll-free number up there as well. Um, and that's basically it. So uh, Alex, uh, or I don't know if it's just going to be Alex or uh, who else is going to be on the call here, but uh, maybe it's going to be Tom. But we, uh, I'm happy to answer any questions. 
we're going to have a, a tag team over here with you, uh, Dr. Levine. This is Alex. Um, great, great presentation. Um, you really make information technology very interesting. Um, and that's not just me. I, I happen to be a, a geek when it comes to that. I, I'm here in Optiplex. I'm like, oh, I have three of them in my closet that are old. Do you want you know, They're great. I take them apart, you know. Um, but I'm watching the attendant, you know, the attentive rate. I mean, Everybody is keeping glued to listening to you. It's very impressive, and we have a lot of questions coming in, so we want to answer them. Um, so basically, we're going to transition into overtime. 